The purpose of this lecture is to explore the ideas of Lev Vygotsky. Uh, Vygotsky was a Soviet uh, psychologist studying psych psychology, obviously, uh, and he actually ran afoul of the Communist Party. He didn't live very long. He was put into jail. Um, but he has some ideas that he's contributed to uh, education that if you take educational classes, you'll uh, hear some of these things mentioned, the zone of proximal development, scaffolding, these types of things. Now, well, what's different from Vygotsky with some of these other people that we've talked about, whether it's Piaget or Rousseau or whomever, uh, it really gets at the issue of language and the use of language to develop our cognitive abilities. And so if you think in the terms of our cognitive tools, what are the tools by which we begin to make meaning and where do these tools come from? Uh, Vygotsky is, is focused on recognizing the importance of the cultural tools that are given to us. So here the teacher becomes really a primary player and the adults become a primary player in the development of young people and how uh, young people begin to um, develop these kind of cognitive tools. So when, when we think about uh, Vygotsky's perspective, he doesn't want to uh, emphasize human development in the terms of biology. For him, it's cultural. It's the development of different modes of language uh, that lead to different forms of consciousness. And that these things come through social upheaval, uh, that it's not just this kind of one uh, gradual move from this to this, but think about the, the printing press and reading and the impact that reading had, uh, making books and print readily available. It leads to this kind of social upheaval uh, that leads to kind of a new way of thinking or you know cognitive tool. Now, again, it's not to say that there wasn't reading before the printing press, but it, it, it allows all people to begin to really cultivate that way of knowing. Um, and so it's important, I think, for us to begin thinking about, for Vygotsky, the importance of the, the community and the cultural world and the language and the symbols that are given to young people um, that help them begin to make meaning of the world. And so again, um, the psychological tools, we think of gestures, uh, think of myth. Uh, we're going to talk about myth when we get to Kieran Egan, because Egan really emphasizes the role that that mythical kind of narrative plays in the ways in which we begin to make sense of the world. Uh, but language, the, develop, the development of signs and signifiers and, and symbols, uh, the narratives that we, um, that we tell and, and use, uh, all of this becomes the, the, the tools that begin to form and shape our consciousness. So that consciousness co arises through social engagement. Um, I put on here that the tools mediate consciousness through interpersonal communication. Think about how young people learn how to talk and learn how to make sense of the world. They do it by being around the adults and, and, and beginning to listen to these ways of speaking and, and they're kind of grafted in, if that makes any sense. They, they're internalized. So these words and tools and language that exist outside of them are really then internalized uh, into their own consciousness and their own identity. So for Vygotsky, there's a sense of the internalization of social relations. And so what you're getting is a move from the outside in. If you think of Piaget, there tends to be this kind of flowering, this human biological development of consciousness that just arises. And here we're getting the opposite, that consciousness comes from the outside in. It comes from the language and the tools that, that uh, give rise to consciousness. Um, so there, I it, but put it's relational and that thought is determined by linguistic and social cultural experience. And so if you recognize this movie Arrival, it's fascinating how in this film it's all about language. You know, humans have linear language and the aliens have a language that is not. Um, it is circular and therefore it leads to a different kind of encounter of time. It, it transforms the main character's brain and gives her a new tool, a cognitive tool to try to address the crisis that's going on. Uh, and so that is what the aliens were actually trying to do. They were trying to come and give this tools to save Earth from, you know, annihilating itself or, or some kind of destruction. Uh, but, but the film is, is kind of predicated on this idea that language shapes and forms uh, our identity. 
And so again, it's important for Lev Vygotsky to see human development doesn't happen naturally. It comes through social upheaval. And this speaks to the role of the important role of the teacher. While in other views, whether it's, um, you know, the Rousseauian view, the Piaget view, um, and others, the teacher can kind of play a side role, setting problems in front of students and help, you know, giving them what they need to try to solve them. But here the teacher becomes a primary, um, a primary player in that the teacher is introducing young people to the cognitive tools, to the language that they need to begin to cultivate an identity. And so um, the rep, one of the ways of thinking about this is, is what Vygotsky refers to as the zone of proximal development, that, that teaching pushes students beyond their understanding. And you can get this little chart over here. Um, you know, things you can do on your own, things you can do with the help of someone, and then things you can't do yet. And that zone of proximal development is where young people could be or what they could do with the help of someone. Think in the terms of lifting weights. Um, you always have to have a spotter. And when you have a spotter, you can oftentimes lift more than what you normally could because you have someone there who's ready to help you uh, in case you run into trouble. Uh, so again, when we think about teaching and introducing young people to difficult concepts and difficult ideas, you know, I think for Vygotsky, he would say that's the point of teaching. The point of teaching isn't just to dumb everything down and make everything applicable to the experience of young people. It is also to pull them and, and introduce them to ideas that are going to begin to expand their consciousness and their awareness. Now the question is going to be, you know, what does this mean as we think about teaching in, in youth ministry? Well, I think it's important that we recognize how Christian ed and youth ministry is, is, is about inviting them into the story. And again, think about what the Christian community is. It is language, it is symbols, it is practices that, that shape, that give us the tools that we need to um, begin to shape and form an identity. And so we have to begin by asking what is the language or symbolic world that's forming and shaping the identity of young people, and then see our own teaching and formation as a, that form of story competition that I've talked about before. You know, introducing them to the biblical story, into the biblical language, introducing them to the symbols of worship, Think about, think about what we do when we try to make worship about just, you know, pleasing what people want. Um, we're not doing it according to Vygotsky. We're not shaping and forming their consciousness um, or their identity. We're, we're just kind of leaving them there. Um, we need to help them understand the Eucharist and understand baptism and understand what Calvin means by church discipline or even the structure of worship, the call and response in Reformed worship or the nature of the liturgy in Catholic worship or Orthodox worship, or in the Pentecostal church, um, to, to help understand the, the different experiences of the Holy Spirit and how that gets regulated. So all of these things are ways in which you're inviting young people into a community and a language that's going to shape and form an identity. And this is what creeds are about, and this is what theology is about. And this is what hearers and doers trying to get you to see as well, that it's, it's thinking about um, how theology disciples, how theology forms and shapes um, young people, uh, and how we can use that along with the biblical story uh, as a way to shape and form the identity of young people. So this, these are the ideas of Vygotsky. Very, very simply, there's a lot more going on here that we could spend some time on, but for our purposes, um, you know, this, this is enough. And what it's really going to do is it's going to push us into thinking about Kieran Egan. And Egan is going to provide for us ways of thinking about the different cognitive tools. He's going to walk us through kind of Western culture, Western history, uh, and look at the, the development, the different points, whether it's these ruptures and these different ways of knowing um, arise and how it shapes culture and changes culture. And then, you know, so as we live here today, how does that impact us and 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 how do we understand um, how we're being shaped and formed uh, by the broader culture uh, and that will then become the basis for us thinking about the very pragmatic and practical how do we teach how do we ask good questions and then as you construct your your uh, lessons and your uh, units and all that kind of stuff uh, we'll hopefully be able to use some of those things to create better questions <laughs>